Well, at least we didn't go to overtime. <laughs> um, that's the first thing I told you guys when we got back to the locker room. Um, listen, you're, we're March basketball right now, basically. Uh, you know, we played a team that's, um, you know, as well coached and as well disciplined as a team in the country. And uh, they make it very difficult to score. And uh, we made it about defense this week. We felt like for us to take the, to start playing better. And we feel like when we play well, then we, we have a chance to, to beat anybody. And we just hadn't been playing well. And it really surrounded around our defensive investment, our emotional, mental, and physical investment defensively. And I felt like for about 25 minutes, that was as uh, good as it's been in the last month. I thought it took a step back. That's why I called some timeouts a little bit earlier than I normally do. Um, utilized our zone a little bit more tonight, a 1-3-1. One, one. Um, and I uh, thought we got it back to where we needed it the last final two and a half, three minutes of the game. Uh, you know, I want to acknowledge, you know, our bench was outstanding. Zach came in and did a great job. Uh, Mamadou was really, really key in terms of his ability to guard in the 1-3-1. One, one. They were Chris McNeil, those guys, and Jay McCumber, those guys were all positive. Um, uh, plus minus, and uh, really excited about the way those guys play. And certainly, Jaron, you know, toughened it out, which was a very physical game for him. And really impressed with his level of toughness. When did you start thinking about maybe using Mamadou at the top of that one three one? Has it always been in the plans? Or? We, we we have. He, he typically has been doing it. We just hadn't played it a lot. Um, you know, we're we're a little undersized in the post now, so we have to make some adjustments in terms of our personnel management of how we play. And, uh, uh, Ichinukwe is, uh, you know, an elite post player in this league, and the physicality that we need to, to have put a little bit more emphasis on him. We did that this game. You mentioned the zone. It looked like you defended ball screens a little bit differently, dropping guys. That just seems like a lot of defensive adjustments in the two days you had. How yeah, we didn't we didn't make a ton of we did make some adjustments, but all screen wise, uh, but not a ton. Um, you know, our philosophy is with our with our system is it's it's, it's flexible to game plan. There's game plan adjustments, but it's not it's all small tweaks. And uh, you know, those guys are aware, aware of usually the tweaks and what, what needs to be done. Do you recall the last time you were able to relax before the buzzer of a basketball game? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I thought about today about how nice that would be to be able to do. You know, it's an interesting gig because you, you really focus and concentrate for like two straight hours. It's like that's why you're exhausted after the game's over. But uh, at least we had, at least we got it done regulation this game. The way they play defense, did you? Well, they're physical, and then they're, they're really good in terms of their ability to get to spots. And I knew it would be difficult uh, to, to get where we need to be able. So we put them in ball screens a lot. We try to ma mask our ball screens. If you notice, we put them in ball screens on the side of the floor a little bit more. We try to get them off the ball. We just tried to make things a little bit more difficult to find them today. John, are you OK with the amount of responsibility that's on Jaron right now? Because it looks like he's initiating a lot of offense. He's obviously getting beat up. Um, it's late. Well, you know, uh, we, we got different guys have stepped up. You know, we're still four guys in double figures scoring, or, or almost five. So I, I think we're pretty balanced. Um, I think the big piece is, uh, Joe, is that he is such a good decision maker that it's just it's malpractice not to put the ball in his hands, in my opinion. And uh, he's a guy that you know we, we ride pretty heavily, and uh, you know he's usually tough enough to be able to handle that. The thing that I thought we did today is we recreated offense off our defense, which was really, really important. John, a lot, of, a lot of teams can get down after a game or you get a double overtime. It's overtime game after overtime game. You have a tough loss. What does it say about just the hard determination of this team to be able to bounce back and get a, get a good quality win on the road? Well, it says a lot. It says that there's you know some, some seniors out there that understand what it takes and some freshmen that are no longer freshmen. And, Different guys stepping up. You know, Javen helped put us in position last game, and a different guy stepped up this game. And Zach having 10 points and what do you have, five rebounds? I mean, in, in 13 minutes is pretty incredible. What do you have, eight points and five rebounds? So you know, for those guys to be able to step up and do what they did speaks to their buy in and their commitment level to their teammates and to the organization. You said earlier that you're playing March basketball now. How closely do you personally follow the Not a ton. I mean, it depends if I got if it's an off day. I may look at it more. I mean, to be honest, but I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it. But we've got we've got people that kind of keep me up to date on it. You know, the bracketology is guessing, in my opinion, right now. So you know, I look at the net in terms of the quad stuff. I'm aware of what our quad wins are, and, you know, what that means. But at the end of the day, I've told our guys, 
it, it, we're not going to hide our head in the sand and say we don't know what's going on, but it doesn't impact your ability to play well or your ability to execute a game plan just because you know what's going on with other teams. You said recently, John, that you, you thought you knew the number that this team needed. Are you still on track for we that are. number? Yeah. I know coaches usually don't like time off, but how important is it to get a week? Do you oh, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need a week. I need a week. <laughs> I'm kidding. We, we need a little bit of time here to reset. You're down 10 6 in the first half and went pretty heavy on the bench. I know you do that in that time slot normally, but knowing you needed this game, how tough is it to put those customers down? Not at all. I, you know, I got a ton of faith in all our guys. I mean, Chris McNeil's like, I got a ton of faith in him. I, I wish I could find more minutes for him right now. But Jaron's a point, makes it a little bit more difficult. But I got all the faith in the world, these guys. Now, when they're out there, they got to produce. I think I've shown that you know the, the, the ten guys that play play, and uh, they've got faith in their teammates. Their teammates have faith in them. You close the first half well, open the second half well. Does that come from intentional focus or urgency? Great question. So yes, uh, we practiced the last three days. We put two minutes on the clock and made the score 35-30, and said, all right, we're going to practice going into halftime. We didn't run out of the practice facility into the locker room, but we we literally practiced going into halftime all week, and. Uh, you know, with this group, if you put an emphasis on something, they typically run with it, and that's a sign of a veteran group. Yeah, so with, with, a, with a bunch of veterans like this, I mean, I guess did mental toughness or resiliency kind of come with those guys, or is, is that something they've got to grow collectively? Well, they know how to win. I mean, you know, Jaron Cumberland knows how to win. You know, Trey Scott knows how to win. You know, Keith Williams knows how to win. Um, you know, this coaching staff knows how to win. I mean, these guys understand what it means to win, and there's a lot of winners in that locker room. And uh, you know, that was before I got here. And, and, and those guys understand that. So I think that shows up in certain spots. You went into the box for Jaron. How important was that for you? It was great. Actually, our trainer bought some minutes for Jaron. <laughs> so if he could do that more often, that would be really helpful for me because it's tough for me to take him out of the game. But it, it really did help. It helped him down the stretch. Did you have a talk with Mamadou about the crowd baiting him into taking shots? Or uh, that's, not, on the three that that's not what happened, was it? He was one for one. Yeah. <laughs> He's two for two against Wichita. He passed it up the first time. In the, the he did. It wasn't, it wasn't a good shot the first time. It was a good shot the second time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you match him on the board, you know, beat him in the paint, beat him uh, second chance points. I know he's a big focus for you guys. How do you deal with him? That I thought we did a great job on him. I, I thought Chris did a really good job. We changed our coverage on him. I thought guys were just more intentional, more focused than anything. I tell you what. This post play in this league is as physical as I've experienced. I mean, it's it's extremely physical, and uh, it's extremely physical. That was your 100th career win, by the way. Uh, How did, it, did it match what you said against Greg at Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I got tremendous. Obviously, he coached me, so there's a, there's yeah. a personal relationship involved there. And, um, you know, my he was. We were talking before the game. He was just the, this was the first game my dad hadn't been able to make, and. Uh, he was disappointed to get a chance to see him. So, uh, you know, it's great. Win, wins like that just they're a testament to the players and coaches you've coached with. And you don't win games without really good players and really good coaches. So, he's got like 500 of them. So. Jaron, obviously, after Wednesday, you knew this was, was one you guys had to have. Was there an extra sense of urgency? I mean, or was it just come out and do the thing? Uh, I mean, we just got to come out. I mean, we don't need no sense of urgency. We got to come out and play our game. We know what the main goal is. We got to win. So we just come out and follow the game plan, and the results will do it. It'll come out by itself. How difficult was it Wednesday after that game, Thursday, you guys had a day off, just to come out that long? Uh, we, we, got a, like, we had a day off after that day. Um, just coming back in the gym, I mean, everybody was wanting to get better and get right back to it. How many free throws do you take in an average practice? Uh, we shoot about a good like to fifty to hundred. Sixty to hundred. Fifty or hundred. Fifty to hundred. And you personally run the same? Yeah. What's your thinking when you go to the free throw line beyond making a shot? I mean, just my same routine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't make it, but sometimes I do, and I just be. I think it's fatigue. Knowing the way they play defense, you did it a bunch of times last year. Did you just feel like you were going to win the game by getting to the line? Yeah, I mean, coach was telling me, get to the line. They're not pressuring up on you. Just get to the line. How difficult has this style been on your body, though? I mean, toward the end there, it looked like you were, were you bleeding? It looked like you were. 
Yeah, I got elbow. He was fighting for a loose ball. How beat up are you? Hmm? How beat up are you from head to toe at this point? I'm sore. <laughs> I'm sore. I still can play though, but just fighting through it. There was a moment in the uh, there was a game that was winding down where you and uh, Trevon, you guys shared on what seemed like a senior moment, bonding moment. What's it like to get a big win like that at this part of the season with you know somebody you've been through so much with? That's a huge win for us. I mean, uh, especially for the things we want to accomplish. And uh, everybody on the bench, the bench players, they came in and did their role. It was it was huge from everybody, from the first five to the bench players. Zach, the team's got an early foul trouble. And you probably need to know you're going to play a little bit more. Yeah. You realize you're going to have to come in and be a spark, whether offense or defense? I mean, no matter what the situation is, I feel like I just got to be ready to play, keep a good mindset <laughs> ready to go. So either way, I feel like I was had the same mindset. What was your guys' defensive plan against their, their big guy, 21? It seemed like a couple times you were sneaking down, Mike was sneaking down. Uh, behind him. Yeah, the plan was just to, like, when he caught the ball on the block, just to have a, the closest guard on the backside to go trap him, basically, and then we just rotate over. So I think we, we did a pretty good job on him. Executed that well. How much more comfortable comfortable are you defensively now? Because it looks like you're, you're pretty locked in on your assignment and, and you understand what coaches are expecting from you. Yeah, I feel like just the transition from college, just a lot um, defensively. There's a lot of new stuff you got to learn, and I feel like Coach B has just done an amazing job, like getting me to the point I am, so, like physically with my body, mentally, all that. So I'm excited. Did it feel like that was the spark you provided today? Was was defense? Yeah, you, you got some points, but it looked like your energy really helped defensively. For sure, like defense for me is like my main thing. I got to be focused on. So I think that was the big big thing today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just keep shooting, keep getting more confident in my shot. Like, I just gotta be ready. So. Has that come with more minutes and being in the rotation a little bit more that you feel more comfortable when you come in? To um, I can't really. I don't really know exactly why. I just feel like as time goes by, I'm gonna get more comfortable and I'll only get better from here. Jaron, a lot of players seem to get down after that loss to UCF. What does it say about this team's character to bounce back the way you did and get a good win? Uh, we're tough-minded. Uh. We know what like what the main goal is. One game, like we have, I don't know how many losses, but we still come back and do what we have to do. So we're still we're in first place, tied with first place to go win the regular season. Jared, how much is this on your shoulders at this point? Late February, senior year, trying to make the push to where you want to go. I mean, you're beat up and you have to do a lot to this offense. How much do you feel like this is your responsibility? Uh, it's not just mine. I mean, I still have four other guys on the court with me. I have faith in all of them and the guys on the bench. Anybody that come on the court, I have faith in finding the open guy and just knowing they had knocked that shot down. When's the last time you felt 100%? Actually, I feel better. It's, like, I just started hurting actually again today. I felt actually good. How important is this week off to hopefully get a little bit healed up and, and refreshed for these final three games? It's huge. Um, definitely be treatment every day. Who teaches Mama do that really sweet stroke three point? <laughs> <laughs> Who has the input on that? Uh, I don't even know for that one. Yeah. Okay. Did you feel the crowd like bait him into taking that shot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but he had he had like real good faith in it and knocked it down. Um, I guess when it was tight late, you guys think it was going to overtime. I mean, it crosses your mind, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but did it feel like a clean look at the end? Did he got off? No. I mean, your heart drops a little bit <laughs> once that ball leaves, but we got it done.